Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at something I call the graphic freeze frame. All right, I see this used a lot of times, especially in sports and action things and uh, maybe movie trailers. That's where I really uh, got a great idea for this from an old movie called Snatch. It's not that hard to do. It uses Photoshop and Premiere Pro to make some certain layers and a quick little animation. Let me show you some examples of this. All right, let's go look at what I have on the timeline. I'll go to the full frame and I've got some type, so I'll just quickly turn that off. I've got the woman, a green background, and then another background which is the same as the last frame. So what you're doing is you're taking the last frame and exporting it out, and I've got a little scale happening here of 125%. And the green has a cross dissolve on it. Very, very quick cross dissolve. So it fades from the background. If you don't have the background, then the green just comes up on its own. And it's the difference between all of these things coming together. So the fact that the background is fading away different than her, she's isolated. And that's what gives this this cool effect. So it's only three frames. Watch this, one, two, three. And if you look at each one of these, they have the scale keyframes going from 100% to 125%. Same with the other guy. Jonesy gets the same, boom, and it comes up. Pretty simple. So let's make one here with this graphic here. Just when he's getting ready for the pitch and boom, I think that's right around there. So this is the frame that I wanna mess with. So I click on this export frame button and it's going to export out the full frame of whatever resolution, this is HD, but if you're working in um, 4K or more, it'll be that frame size. I'm just gonna export this out as a JPEG and I'm also gonna import it back into the project. And I'll call this Taylor Still. And I'm gonna browse where to put this. I'll put this back in the same uh, location as the project. So that's the project and I'll click OK. So we now have a still of him, and if I drag that into the timeline, then we have the freeze frame part of it. <laughs> but if I don't move the rest of this video down, when he, we exit the freeze frame, we're on a completely different frame. So you have to cut the video and move it down the duration of the freeze. And you can do that very easily. Uh, you can just grab the razor tool, you grab the C key and click, and I've cut that. Now get the, the uh, track select forward tool is the easiest way to do that. If you grab the A key, hold down shift, now it selects all of that. Go back to the selection tool and move that down. So now it holds on the freeze frame and if we want to make that a little bit, maybe right there, then I'll do a quick ripple delete on that ripple edit and it holds and it goes back down. Okay, so we need to do something to this graphic to make it look interesting. We're going to take this JPEG into Photoshop and cut him out of the background. And you can do that really easy 
in the project panel, select it, in the edit menu, edit in Photoshop. Now, this is the new floating um, editor in Photoshop that uh, is supposed to do a good job of removing a background. If I click and remove the background, uh, let's see what happens. It does that. And I don't think that's as good a job on his foot and it just seems a little soft. So I'm gonna undo that. In instead, I'm going to try to select the subject and I think that does a better job and we can edit his foot here. So if you choose one of these selection, object selection or quick selection, any of these, you get select subject, which I just did down here and select and mask. Now I'll link at the, in the description and at the end to a tutorial where I've got really detailed examples of how you can work with the masking in Photoshop when this automatic stuff doesn't work perfectly. You have unbelievable controls, so watch that. All right, so select and mask, and it takes us to the select and mask. I'm gonna turn the transparency all the way down, and this is a little soft, so I'm going to turn the contrast up, sharpen the edge a little bit, and I want the output to be a layer mask so I can edit it. And I'm also going to remember the settings. Oh, there we go. Remember my settings. So I like this setting. I'll click OK. So if we hold Alt on Windows Option on Mac, we can see the mask. And if you watch my selection uh, tutorial, you know I can grab the keyboard shortcuts B, D, X, zero, grab a brush, and I can edit that a little bit. It's funny, when I was making this tutorial, um, it, it seemed to uh, work a little bit better. So I'm just bringing back this by painting a little white and if we look at the mask hold shift and we can turn off the mask and you can actually paint on the mask while you're not looking at the mask so if I want to make sure whoop, I'm painting his foot and the bottom of his shoe there. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's only going to be on the screen for a short amount of time. All right. So here's what I like to do. I've made a mask. I don't ever want the stuff in the mask. So, and if, if I want, I can go and do this all again, but I like to delete the mask just to get it out of there and make sure nothing is, ever changes. So I'll right click on the mask and I'll apply it. So now it's gone, he's transparent. And if I save this, I wanna save this as a Photoshop file. So if I save, because I've, I've created transparency, you can't have transparency in a JPEG, so I'm just gonna save this as Taylor Still, but now as a PSD and I'm going to not show that again. And if we go back to Premiere Pro, we still have the original still on the bottom. We don't wanna change that. We wanna import the other Photoshop file. And instead of going to file and all of that, I just double click in an empty area down here and there's our PSD. And I'll click okay because it's coming in with the layer. And now we've got him isolated. Now you can't tell because the bottom is on the bottom track. So actually we want to drag the PSD up a layer and put a graphic color 
in between them. And you can do that by grabbing the new item and color mat. It's the size of my sequence and I can use the eyedropper tool. Maybe I'll grab a little bit of the uh, red here or maybe the blue on his laces. Click OK and drag that in between. So now we've got him isolated on this blue, uh, but it jumps really quickly. So I'll click on the color mat, Control D, Command D to add a cross dissolve. To change the cross dissolve, double click on it, and I'm typing three for three frames. So now we've got one, two, three, and there he goes. So if you just like that, then we're done. And then it jumps back to the remaining animation. But I like that little push in, that 125% push in. So we can't do both of these at the same time. So I'll click on the uh, background because we need to do it on here too. Add scale, zero, move ahead, one, two, three, 125, enter. And I'll click on scale and it selects both, copy it, go to the tailor, go to the beginning, click on scale and paste. So now they both zoom in, boop, just like that. And I've created another version instead of that background. I've actually created a graphic I'll show you what it is here. It's the same thing with an outline, his name and some other graphics and, and thrown in there. So um, we could just do that if we want. So if I open that up in Photoshop and we look at the layers, it's the same thing as before. Although once I did isolate him out of the background, I went to Image, Adjustment, and Posterize. And what Posterize does is it reduces the amount of colors and gives it that gritty kind of look. This is a destructive effect, so you can't undo this. Um, so I like this. I think this looks good. And then I added, again, the, the graphics there, his name, and these were some lines that I brought in from Motion Array to create this whole thing. So I'm not going to animate this part, but what I could do is, is instead of having all of these graphics, I could just bring in that graphic and again, go to scale, go to the beginning and paste it. So now he, we've got that kind of graphic. Now I am scaling this Oops, a little bit beyond uh, what I should be. Maybe I'll take that down. So I didn't design the frame this correctly. So it's 104. So this should be 104. And it holds. and it pops down. Okay, so I, I, in the pool ones, I did a scale back down. So I, I went back from 125 uh, to zero. Now you don't have to have still images in here. When you do that freeze frame graphic, why not throw an animation in there? So let me show you that example. Okay, let's pick this apart. So first of all, we've got the dancer on his own layer. Um, I have some of this motion array smoke going on behind his hair. And then I've got a motion array background graphic. And then again, we've got the dancer down here so that it will do the fade. See, if you don't have the original graphic below, then it's just going to go to black and it, it's not as interesting. So you're zooming in to do that. 
Now he has got an extra effect on him. So let's look at, we'll find that in my project and open that up in Photoshop. And there's a new feature in Photoshop for gradients. And if you've worked in gradients in previous versions of Photoshop, they're pretty restrictive. But there's a new live gradient inside Premiere Pro that makes this effect fantastic. This is all live. So instead of the posterize effect that I did earlier where it was done, this one you can tweak. So let's break this apart. I've got two things happening. I've got the original still frame of him. And above that, I have a gradient fill and I have it set to hard mix. And that gives us this, this grungy kind of look. And I also have a clipping mask between these two. So if you don't clip this, then the gradient falls outside. But if you hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac and click, now the gradient only falls in there. Watch this though, this is the really cool thing. I'll grab my gradient tool over here and now I have this live gradient. So if I move this around, I can change how this looks. It's just a way to for me to highlight his face because sometimes the, the gradient would obscure his face and I want his eyes and features to be prominent. And you can still control all of this too, all of the colors going on. So let me just uh, close that and not save it. Let's go back again and break this apart. If I turn off the animation, you can see I've got two things going on behind his hair. I have that smoke effect and I also put a little warp on his hair too. So if we go to the dancer, this is the wave warp. Very subtly, I'm just warping how his hair moves around just to give the whole thing an animation. And then when you turn the whole thing on again, So there you go, that's something I call the graphic freeze frame. Have fun with it. Pay attention to some of the stuff you see in broadcast television, sports things, they do this all the time. Guy catches the ball, boom, and then there's some animation. Maybe there's the, uh, the uh, team colors and the team uh, logo, stuff like that. So go nuts, have fun. Hey, if you're new to Video Reveal and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more, you can do that on videoreveal.com slash shop. Donate once or monthly, any amount. Thanks to all of our wonderful donors. We really do appreciate it. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to pay attention when I'm sitting and watching movies and television and then turn these uh, cool effects into a tutorial for you.